everybody what's going on welcome back to my channel this is a hustle and sell review season three episode nine uh the future is female so before we get into uh before we get into this review please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so you'll be up to date whenever i upload um any of my content let me let y'all know right now i'm kind of feeling a little bit under the weather my sinuses are like messing with me as you see i got the hair pulled back in a ponytail because it's, I don't have to go to a graduation today. Shout out to my god baby, Serena Michelle Hunt. She graduated from Conley High School. Um, I'm actually holding on to their commencement thing right now. Because I'm using this as my fan. Because I'm hot. I'm hotter than a hook in church. And so I'm trying to go um, get through this. I'm going to try to get through this review as quick and as entertaining as I can. So I can go lay my ass down. Because I'm just really not even feeling good, y'all. But let's get into this review, okay? So, it starts off where it left off last time with these two ratchet-ass bitches jumping on cola. And as the security comes and breaks it up, Anna's whole thing is Cola turned to me and she started talking shit, which she did not. Cola turned to that girl and she gave her some, basically she told her to her face what she already knew and it pissed Cola, I mean it pissed Anna off. Cola looked at Anna and she said, oh, watch your back girl because you know she goes after everything that you got. And that set Anna off. I think that tidbit of truth is what set Anna ass off. And it pissed her off and that was her reason for going into um, attacking um uh, Cola. And Fanny's excuse was I have my own beef with Cola, so hell, why not take that as my opportunity to beat her ass too? That's why you ain't shit either. You ain't shit and I ain't shit and the pink teacup ain't never gonna be shit. Lawrence, you gonna have to reel them hoes in. I done told you plenty of times before you need to get some human resources in that bitch because these hoes is running the fucking muck. They fighting all the goddamn place all over the place and Anna has no reason to come after that girl the way that she did. Anna or Fanny. She, again, she's gotten her feelings because she's spoke some truth to her goddamn ass and that's bullshit right there um chef lp um he even says he already got a noise complaint so you got a noise complaint and then on top of that these hoes is fighting in the restaurant motherfucker right in the middle of the lunch shift people are eating their food it's a white boy to the side like what the fuck cutting up his goddamn food looking at these hoes the manager's all three of them managers, but the owner and one of the big managers jumping on another employee in front of people. Why are they eating their goddamn chicken and waffles? Lawrence, you should have sent all them hoes home that day. Should not have now another one of them bitches been in there for the rest of the day. Go home and you think about what the fuck you did. Because bitch, you're fucking up my goddamn property value. And we can't have that. Cola calls John John. Because, of course, that is like her knight in shining armor. She has to run to John John whenever something happens. She says that John John has always been there for her. So it is just, um, she knows that he's going to be there for her during um, this little situation that she's going through. So she calls him up. She tells John John that, hey, you know, um, Anna and Thandy jumped me. And, of course, he didn't want to say, I told you so. But I told you so because he knew that them bitches was no good. He tried to warn her from the get-go. Do not go back there. You know them hoes are shiesty. You know they ain't no damn good. You know Anna is... Anna really... And, you, and she... And the thing that irritated me about... What irritates me about Cola now is she keeps throwing this word friend around. She keeps saying, I lost friends. I lost friends. Anna and Thandy were not your doggone friends. Lawrence wasn't even your doggone friend. He just kept your ass around for the business. That's the only reason they kept it, you around, period. It's for the business. So stop saying your friends. Boo-boo. They not your friends, okay? They didn't give a damn about you. So, of course, John John um, makes a suggestion for her to move back to New York because, of course, you know, he, Eric, had already approached him, or uh, approached Cole about him drinking too much because of the deci uh, decision that he made to choose Eric over Cola. So now Cola is saying in her mind, yes, since everything at the pink teacup went sour and I've lost friends and um, John John is already going through his situation, I want to be there to support him through whatever he's going through. Bitch, no. Fuck that. I understand that, you know, you if you're going to go back to New York, go back on your own merit. Don't sit up there and, 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 I mean, your own reasons. Don't sit up there and say you're going back because you're going to support that man. Because you're going to get your own feelings mixed up in that. And not only that, why would you, I mean, I get it. You want to be there to support him. But you're going to be there to support him to build him up so he can be with somebody else. That's just facts. Moving right along. Oh, and then one more thing that she said that, that, 
Ugh, that irked me. She was like, and I know another reason why me and you aren't together is um, because I'm not there in New York. I mean, my family is here, but everything went south at the Pink Tea Club, at the Pink Tea Cup, and I'm not there with you, and that's another reason why you're not my man. Now, girl, another reason why he ain't your man, because he like other men. Hell, I'm going to be with you, girl. Come on, Cola. Oh, uh, come on, girl. Move right along from that. So, um, the twins go play basketball. And, of course, finally, Dominic tells Stefan that he is going to take the job in Germany. Which, duh, he comes to the realization, I would be very dumb if I didn't take this opportunity. Because they want him. And Stefan's like, well, you know what? It, he didn't lose his shit this time because he has some time to marinate on that shit and think about that shit. And he's proud of his brother. You know, he's ready, not necessarily to stand on his own two feet. But then you're 28, you got here on your balls it's time it is time get your shit together move right along from that chef lp finally talks to anna and fandy and he tells them that he is not happy about what happened in the restaurant he asks um anna what the fuck were you thinking and it's like well next thing you know, she was in here talking shit next thing you know she turns to me and start talking shit which she fucking did not she warned you i mean she didn't even warn you she just spit some truth in your face and you didn't like that and anna says i just i snapped you snap because you a punk ass bitch. And then he turns to Fandy and Fandy, all she could do is apologize. But she's trying to stay in Lawrence's good grace anyway because she knows she, you know she wants Lawrence. So she's trying to stay in his good grace in any way she wants to. But Chef LP breaks it down to them and he lets them know this new location that I'm going to build, you or you don't have nothing to do with it. Of course, Fandy looking like, what? Like, I ain't got nothing to do with it. And a goddamn with her evil ass, she like, hmm. Any pink tea cup he have, I'm going to be up in that bitch. And Lawrence, I believe her too. Any restaurant you open up, as long as you were Anna, she going to be there. And she going to be running that. Just like she running the one that y'all in now. Just like she was running the one that was in Brooklyn. I'm sorry, you the owner. But Anna run that bitch. Simple as that. Girl, it's this part where Anna got the nerve to tell the twins to behave. She said, I feel like I'm dealing with a bunch of children. Bitch, what the fuck is you talking about? And like the twins have said, uh, Lisa, we ain't fighting up in here. No, you behave, bitch. What the hell is wrong with you? At least he was on his job enough to know Anika ass is outside in the pool, cleaning the little pool that they got, the little creek thing that they got in the back of the restaurant. The girl takes her shorts off. And gets inside the pool with the pool cleaner and is cleaning up the pool. She got on a G-string, some fishnets, and a shirt with no bra. With a little titties poking, a little, little boop loop poking on up out of there. So, Chef LP is looking at Anna. He like, hey, um, go get this girl. What the fuck is she out there doing? Like, man, what the fuck is she? I got customers in this month. What the fuck is she doing? So Anna goes out there and they're like, um, Anika, hello. Anika's like, what? Oh no, I didn't know. You could tell. Homegirl was litty like a titty. She was on something and it was clear as day she was on something. She trying to hide her eyes so Anna can't see her eyes. They have to call an Uber to take that bitch home. They didn't want her ass to go through the restaurant because it's customers and shit all up in there eating their chick. It's, we're the health department. It's so many goddamn health code violations up in that restaurant. From ass cheeks over the chicken to bitches fighting outside to pulling lace fronts off to naked bitches in the creek outside. You can't take that bitch back there in the kitchen. Not 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 after all of that shit. It's 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 a trip. So they end up calling the Uber to take her home or whatever, and you know, Anna's asking her, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But she's like, nothing, nothing. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But girl. Bitches running wild. Bitches be running wild. Nikki and Cola have dinner, and Cola looks so beautiful in this scene. I love what she had on. I love the way her hair was. She looked so cute in this little scene. And so they talk about the fight that happened the day before, and Nikki's telling her, you know, for somebody that just got into a fight, got two girls jumped on her, my bitch looked good, but she looked good. Didn't have a scratch on her. I don't know if it was makeup or what, but she didn't have a damn scratch on her. And Nikki apologizes to Cola for telling her, like, look, hey, I couldn't jump in that fight. You know, I already got my own court shit going on, so I can't really be having nothing to do with that which she totally 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 understands like she told her it's not worth you going to jail and risking your freedom over these two hood right ass bitches that can't keep their goddamn hands to themselves and you know cola is is telling nikki you know watch your back while you there because 
you know, these, these bitches is, they, they up to no goddamn good. And they shady. They shysty. One minute they cool with you, the next minute they gonna flip on you. And, uh, Nikki, with you already having a, a pending court case, you don't need to be around that ratchet ass shit. Cause you lying to bust another bitch in the head with some glass and end up doing, uh, 10 to 15 instead of 5 to 10. Come on now. Don't even do it, bitch. Don't even do it. Um, Anika comes in on her day off because she talks to Chef LP about the fuckery that happened, um, a couple of days, whatever, before with her being up in a goddamn restaurant with her ass out in a goddamn pool. And so she proceed, uh, proceeds to tell him that she was on two bags of cocaine that day. Chef LP is like, two bags? Two bags? He said that shit like he knew that shit. Two bags? Last time I was on two bags of cocaine, I was down the middle of goddamn Sunset Boulevard with my dick in my hands. And so he said that shit like he had did that shit before, like two bags. Bitch, you need help. And I believe that wasn't the only time that she was high. She looked like she high in half her damn confessionals any goddamn wrong way. Bless her heart. Where her mama them. And then she says that, you know what, she she does want to get help. She realizes that she does have an addiction to cocaine. And she wants to get right because she wants to get herself together so she can get her daughter back. Because, as you know, she has a daughter, but her mother took her daughter away from her. She got pregnant when she was 15. I don't know how old she is now. If anybody know how old she is, drop down in the comments let me know. But she wants to get her life together so she can get back and she can get with her daughter and, you know, build up her relationship from there. And Chef LP asked her, do you have any family or somebody? Because I'm sure going through some kind of rehab, you're going to need some support. You're going to damn sure need better support than the motherfucking pink teacup because they, no, nah, fuck that. If that's the support you got right there, you don't need it. You don't want it. Uh-uh, you don't want it. So she does say that she has a brother that she's going to reach out to and she's going to connect with and, you know, just, just let him know what's going on so he can be there to support her through um, the crazy fuckery that is going on with her right now. Bless her heart. I hope she does get um, the help that she needs because homegirl, homegirl, that's, that's bad. That's bad. That's real bad. Um, Cola, Nikki, and the twins go out to play pool, and, um, Cola tells them that, uh, well, first off, Dom tells everybody that he has made the decision that he is going to go to Germany to pursue the modeling contract that he got, and then Cola makes the announcement that she is going to move back to New York. Now, of course... She has to let them know that she's moving back because she wants to be there to support John John and whatever it is that she's going through. I mean, that he's going through. But it's like she's she's telling them and she's going so hard for it. Bitch, are you trying to convince yourself? Are you trying to convince them? Or who are you trying to convince in this? It's like she's trying to talk herself into the, the decision that she's making is right to move back to New York, which is fine. Do what you do, boo-boo, but just don't go back for him. Go back for you. That's all I'm saying. You, come on now, sis. For real, for real. Um, then in, um, Chef LP talks. She apologizes to him for jumping on um, goddamn Cola the way that they did. You know, that was fucked up. And she realizes that that was fucked up. Then she starts to tell LP that she as well thinks that Atlanta will be a good spot to open up the next Pink Teacup restaurant. And he's like, wait a minute. Why are you all of a sudden outside with Anna? Because they fucking around probably. You know that shit, goddamn LP. Don't play that fucking shit. But she's like, well, it's not necessarily to support um, Anna, but it's to, su to support the brand. And so I'm going to do anything to support the brand, which is a goddamn goal lie because Anna got her mixed up in this goddamn plan, plot, and scheme whatever kind of sneaky ass shit she trying to pull and she pulling Thandie in that shit. But Thandie is trying to give LP the heads up on the slotto because she was like, I just want to let you know that um, Thandie invited me out to dinner. And he was like, oh really? Well, she didn't even tell me she was inviting you out to dinner. She was like, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that bitch trying to let it be known like it's some, some shit going on. I can't say what it is. But watch your back, because you already know. She trying to watch your front. Watch out for that bitch. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm goddamn saying. Cole and Nikki are trying to cheer uh, Steph up. It's so cute. He's been bummed out since Dominic does, has decided to take the little um, modeling gig in Germany. So they're trying to cheer him up. And it's so cute. They went and bought him some drinks or whatever. And so um, that's when you get to, uh, I learned a little bit more about Steph and Dom and their relationship and why they are so close. Their biological father died when they were very young. And then their stepfather committed suicide. So it's always been the two of them plus their mom 
mom and that's why they're very very close and so it's understandable why Steph is feeling the way he's feeling he's feeling like he's going through some abandonment losing his brother so it's completely understandable why he is bummed out the way that he is but Nikki and Carla vow that they're gonna try to cheer him up as, as much as they can you know you ain't no motherfucking twin but it's really really it's it was a touching little scene and you got to know more about Steph and Dom and their their whole um, reason why they are so close to one another and I thought it was really really cute really really cute um, Anika meets up with her brother and she explains to her brother what she tells her brother about the fuckery that happened at the doggone restaurant this bitch says she was high she thought she was at the strip club and that's why she started taking her clothes off she kind of like blanked out or whatever for a minute and so her brother's telling her like you know you too good for this don't you want more don't you want to get your daughter back and she's like yeah i know i need help and you know she's um she had she was saying that, um, I think she was saying that she had been on cocaine before and she had gotten off of it. She had actually got on it when she was working at the strip club and she had gotten off of it for a while, but you know, she had relapsed on it. And so basically it's kind of gotten to the point to where it's a little bit out of control for her and she does want to go get some help with that. And that's big of her to realize that she is, um, going through some shit and that she wants to get help for that. Cause you know, most people, they... They don't realize when they got shit going on with them and when they need to do better and when they need to get the help. But it is good that she does realize that she needs some help and she's going to go get the help. So, good for her. Um, Nikki and Cola meet up to talk about Cola's decision to move back to New York. And Nikki, I like Nikki. I really do like Nikki. She's somebody I can see hanging out with because she's cool. Not only because uh, my, my name is Nikki too, but, you know, she seems like she's fucking cool. But um, they meet up to talk about Cola's decision to move back to New York. And so Nikki wants to make sure that Cola is not is moving back on her own and she's not moving back just so she could be there for John John again to build him up to be with somebody else so that they can go off and live happily ever after and you know she a big part of her reason yes that she is moving back is because of John John like she's telling um Nikki well Nikki I still love him and you can love him and you can also love him from a distance but girl don't go back just because you feel like this is what you need to do for him Move back because you feel like that's something that you want to do for you, boo-boo. Come on now, girl. But um, Nikki also tells her that she decided not to take the plea deal because, you know, she had a plea deal of um, 36 months that was knocked down to 18 months. But she does tell her that there is a risk with her not taking that plea deal. She can end up getting 5 to 10 years. Now, this is what I don't fucking understand. If I get into a fight with my cousin, then I got into a fucking fight with my cousin. And that's just what it is. Now, the police getting called and involved and all of that, to me, that's just plural. Unless somebody... I mean, just, I, I don't know. I'm just saying if it was me, if I got to fight with my family member, I got to fight with my family member. That's just what the fuck it is. And that's bullshit that she got to go through this whole court system and, and, and all of this. But hopefully things work out in her favor because I would not want her to go to jail, which I'm guessing she not because I followed a girl on Twitter. So she can't be, well, at least she ain't in jail right now. So hopefully she, um, yeah, hopefully she, she ain't really got to go. But, um, Anna and Dandy have their dinner. Now, this whole scene was weird as hell to me. Anna's sitting at the table, and she got her little phone, taking pictures, making sure her boobs are sitting up good, and they start playing this old sexy-ass music and shit, and then here come Dandy walking up. It's like, what the fuck is going on? I see what you Mm, little sister wife's ass. But they playing this little sexy music and uh, then it comes sashay her ass up there. Then uh, Anna telling her how good her dress looks and how she looks good and then Thandie's complimenting her and then Thandie, you can kind of tell either Thandie was getting excited or she was uncomfortable because then Thandie was like, okay, where these drinks at? Which I was tight to where like, what, what the fuck is going on? Can we break this shit up? Cut it! Cut it! Because the shit was just kind of weird for a minute. So... Anna proceeds to tell her that she has this plan to basically undercut Lawrence and open up a chicken and waffle spot out in Atlanta without his knowledge, which that bitch is crazy, crazy, deranged. That bitch is crazy. So she has this contract and everything that she wants Thandie to sign, basically promising that she's not going to say anything to Lawrence about it. What well, now? What all is in that contract? I don't know. Thandie signs it like a fucking dumbass. Now, 
I'm not in the, I know nothing about the entertainment industry, entertainment, entertainment industry or anything like that. But what the fuck I do know is that you don't sign no fucking contract without reading it. I don't know if that was good editing or what, but Fandy did not read that fucking contract, but she did fucking sign it. What was entitled in there? I don't know. It could have been something like you got to lick my feet every night for the next 365 days. Plus make my water and scratch my ass when I tell you to, but bitch, it's in a contract. You signed it. So get to fucking scratching and that my ladies and gentlemen was the end of the episode <laughs> right there let me know uh what you thought about it why dandy signed this goddamn contract i i i don't know but you know what let's just wrap up the episode uh Cola, don't move back to goddamn new york for john john now if you're gonna move back move back for you don't move back for him Okay, move back for you. Get yourself together and get out there and get you somebody that wants you for you and not going to string you the fuck alone. Nikki, I pray to God you don't go to jail because you pretty girl and you're going to be somebody's bitch. I'm just keeping it real because you cute girl. But then you know what? Hey, more power to you, bitch. Hope that don't work out for you. Um, Anika, you go get you some help. Go get you some help. Go get you some help. Steph, keep your head up, cause uh, your brother, he he got on, he finna get out there, Dom, go to Germany, do your goddamn thing, and bring your brother back, bring him back, and y'all gonna make some money. Thandy, Anna, y'all are scissors sisters, it's obvious. Um, goddamn, Thandy, watch fucking Anna. Watch Anna and Anna watch Fandy because little do you know she trying to city girls you bitch She's gonna take your man while you trying to take the business. She trying to take your man Chef LP watch out for the both of them hoes. Please like comment subscribe to my channel Let me know what you think and I will see you in the next episode of hustle and soul <laughs> Peace out y'all what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i have